it's Don, the auction professor. Uh, today I had a question on a video, and it was a, a very good question, um, something I, I've never thought about and never really touched on at all on any of my videos. Um, part of what we do is, is um, relying on repeat customers and multiple purchases from the same person. Um, and we pay attention to this. Now, if we buy, you know, we have people that buy multiple cards at the same day and they don't combine them or they purchase them at different times or they don't even realize it's us, we always pay attention to that throughout the day. We'll always want, either me or the wife, will look at every single listing that's sold before it is shipped out to make sure that we don't need to combine anything. Even if someone hasn't asked to combine, we still combine them and always refund the difference. We only charge the flat 350 to ship like a card, for example. Routinely, almost every day of the week, we sell at least two items to the same person almost every single day of the week. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's twenty. Um, in the clothing industry and what you're selling in clothing and books, you just don't have that opportunity for the most part because the chances of you having the same size and clothing style that the person's going to want is very slim. So for the most part, you're selling one-offs. Now that's totally different when you're doing collectibles and antiques and vintage items because literally the name dictates what it is. It's a collectible. The people who buy stuff from you collect that type of item and they'll keep buying that type of item. So we've paid attention and we learned. In the beginning when we started the clothing, we didn't realize that as much, you know, in the first year or so we started switching over to antiques and collectibles. So we lost a little bit by not realizing and taking advantage of these opportunities. Um, when you're first starting off, and you're selling in collectibles, it's something like a wide area that, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to sell many items in there and you have a bunch of these items, send emails to the people after they buy to say, hey, it's on its way, look, I list this item all the time, or even list those those things in your listing, like, you know, that I've got plenty of other cards in every single listing you do, I've got plenty of cards in the same field, many others up right now, I list every single certain day of the week, I list two days a week, three days a week, new items, you know, constantly, so our listings literally say that. Uh, for the most part and my actual store main page talks about how many days a week we list you know every day of the week we try to list something through Monday through Friday we're listing a, hopefully a hundred or more items a day um, trying to combat how many we sell if you're selling 400 items a week you have to uh, list five or six to stay ahead of the game that's why we don't gain as much ground as we would like because we're selling so many items that it sinks into what we just listed so, you know, if you're selling four, four, or five, six, seven hundred items a week, you gotta keep increasing how many you sell to stay at that level and to increase. But with your customers, you, you've got to know your customers. We've spent time, I've put names on spreadsheets when we realized who people were. We've had people from different museums that buy from us. We kept a note of that. We, we go out of our way to make uh, certain specific comments to the people or send them notices and notes and things like that. You know, your stuff's on the way. Are you looking for this? Glad to have your business. You just want to build a rapport with all these people so they're going to choose you over somebody else. And again, that goes with packing right. Every aspect you do in the collectibles industry matters. Anybody who sells records for any length of time is going to know how picky some people can be in the category. I don't blame them at all. I don't get upset. That's the way it is because there are certain areas that I'm just as picky, if not pickier, than some people um, when I'm doing certain things. So I completely understand it. That's just the way it is. But in this industry, you have to wrap properly. You have to address them properly. You treat them almost like a comrade in arms, basically. And that gives you this rapport where they keep coming back to you. So I try to look at a lot of the names in certain categories. Now, certain categories that we sell certain items in, I never even worry about it because they're such oddball items. But if it's a card or a postcard or something California, we always look to see if it's somebody who we've done business before. And we'll give them a heads up, whether it's not really anything big. We'll say, hey, I'm listing some cards. When, you know, We don't really announce this, but I have some specific cards from California that you may be interested in going up tomorrow or Thursday or whatever day. That lets them in on it. You know, It's no, not a big deal. They bought from you before. You're giving them nothing really, but they're getting something out of it because they, they're excited about it for the most part when you're selling specific items. Postcard collectors for California, for example, they they really get in there and want those cards, you know. So, you know, that's literally as I've said in other videos, that's the number one postcard category that I could tell you to to get into is postcards of California, you know. But aside from that, that's just what you want to do. You want to build this rapport. 
contact these people make a list if you want you know ask them you can you know say hey if you're ever interested in something let me know I can put you on a list and then you can email these people later on throughout the you know year as you find items that they may be interested in they're gonna keep you on their mind tell them to favorite your store like your store and come back and check if that's what you'd rather do but the point is get it out there get the information out there that you get this stuff all the time or you're looking for this stuff and you're gonna try and help them out they're collectors they want this stuff it's not like clothing it's not like video games it's not like books it's a totally different market every aspect of it is different you need to be able to address it the same way that you know the heavy collectors and the heavy sellers do where you you build this rapport and again that's what we do so you do have to have a contact you do have to keep track of who your customers are make a list if that's what it is I don't know how many days of the week that somebody doesn't ask me if you get this tell us if you get that tell us blah 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 they'll, they'll ask for all these items if you you want some more business for the future contact these people you do it a couple of times they're gonna save your store and they're gonna return to your store over and over and over again again as I said we didn't do this in the beginning never even had a clue that, that there'd be so many buying from the same or for the same items, the same type of items, over and over and over and over again. Postcard collectors collect postcards. They buy them all the time. They spend all their free money on that. That's what they do. So you've got to build a rapport, even on eBay, even on, on Amazon, or wherever you're selling the items at. Build a rapport with these people. Bring them in. Draw them into your store and keep them coming back to your store with new items of that same type. That's why I say that we have a 90-day plan where we set stuff aside to get enough in so that they can say, hey, look, this guy's got a lot of these items. I'm going to have to keep checking back with him you want followers on eBay hundreds the better the more you can get the better it means people are watching and actively looking at you it helps your search ranking it, it all is a big package deal as I've said before though but again pay attention to who your customers are if you're selling the antiques and collectibles go out of your way to it to converse with these people find out what they're looking for say hey you know we list stuff is this something you'd look for in the future or is there any other type similar to this hear what your customers saying too you know it, it's not just a one-sided ordeal here when you sell something try and converse and get some feedback from these people especially when you're first starting out and just getting and branching off from other things than clothing and the typical stuff a lot of these items that we sell and probably most of what we sell in here are items that we have many of and we've got 20 or so niche categories so with each one of those categories we want to have as many of those items as we can and keep listing items in those same categories that's why I've centered in on certain items and we're really thinking about straying away from totally clothing we've marked them down some we're selling some out I haven't bought any new clothing probably in a couple weeks now at this point other than some uh, snapback hats which I will show you in a haul because they're you know hundred couple hundred dollars snapback hats but um, other than that I don't usually show clothing but these are different these are something that you know there's very specific things to look for um, but again that's just what it is with with your customers you get get to know them they'll come back to your store they'll they'll have a friendly rapport with them some of them I know what they do and all these other aspects of their life I know what they do with the products they buy from me some of them are artists some of them are you know movie props and designers and you know uh, um, big wigs or whatever the case may be everybody's the same get to know them and spend some time in that um, but that's really about it on that subject I've spent hours of, of my time in the beginning getting to know these people and again it didn't didn't know it right off the bat I didn't realize it right off the bat but as soon as I figured it out I bombed everybody with information and tried to get as much back um, but enough on that a couple other just quick uh, um, things I wanted to touch base on too uh, we are picking our critique person uh, later tonight um, I actually have two employees that will be here and uh, one of them will be picking it I'm gonna video it so you can see the pics so you, it's not just some random thing um, but I'm very fair I just we just put the names in a hat and we're just gonna go from there um, so that's the update on that um, and then we'll have a video on the critique in a couple days or so I'm um, coming out the line here this week uh, live obviously Wednesday 7 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, gonna be an hour or more last one ran an hour and 20 so maybe I'll shoot for an hour and a half so if you got a lot of questions that's fine I'm gonna bring some of the haul videos to the beginning of the video will be a few haul items that I have to show too um, and we'll go on from there um, but I also have another video coming out for um, an Excel sheet for those of you who want to do inventory easily on an Excel sheet I've got it all broken down 
Um, it's just going to be literally a, a you know a 15 minute uh, explanation of the sheets, how to use them, how they can be fixed for your specific business. But anybody who's starting off with eBay, this is a perfect, easy to use example. Um, it'll pull figures up from each month. It separates the categories and your expenses and the whole works. But I'll explain that. It's it's a big, easy one to use. I'll include a copy of it, just as I have for some of the other videos. Um, a, an attachment in Word, so you can actually just download it yourself and look over it. Use it as you wish. Uh, change the headings and the wording. If you need help with any of the Word documents or Excel forms I put up, I can you know go over that too on how to lock items so that you don't erase the wrong formulas or anything like that. Um, but that's uh, what we got going on for today. Um, and again, I'm going to have a haul video coming up here too. We've done a bunch of hauls. Um, and I'm trying to not just show you items. I'm trying to help you uh, understand things and show things. So I'm going to have some uh, more into slides possibly coming up here. I've got some costume jewelry we've been working on too. Uh, so we're going to have some more good videos up. And again, if you haven't seen all my videos in the past, I've got about 160 videos where I cover... Uh, untold amounts of different items that you've probably never seen, never heard, and had no idea. Um, if nothing else, watch some of the What Sold videos, and you're going to see some items that you've never had any clue that would be worth some of the money you've seen. Um, and I haven't been doing this for a long time, but I try to put up a lot of videos. Um, I love doing the videos. I love talking about the stuff more than anything, uh, because this is our life. This is what we do. This is our full-time endeavor, and nothing else we would care to do more than what we're doing right now. So um, that's what I have. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please hit the bell icon up top if you'd like to know about new videos when we post them and our live feed um, and then hit the like button below if you enjoyed it subscribe and tell a friend